Today we're going to be looking at an XKCD video that's already been heavily requested. Specifically, what if we teleported the oceans to Mars? A follow-up video to what if we drain the ocean? If you haven't seen my reaction to that video, I'll pin it in the comments down below. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Tyler Fulce. I'm a nuclear engineer with a little over 10 years of experience in the commercial nuclear power industry. From engineering operations to emergency response. I don't claim to know everything there is nuclear, but I can certainly share some knowledge. Let's continue. This question comes from Ian, and many, many others, who asks, suppose you did drain the Earth's oceans and dump the water on top of the Curiosity rover. How would Mars change as the water accumulated? I like specifically dump it on the Curiosity rover. If it can't find liquid water, we'll bring liquid water to it. In the previous What If, we opened a portal at the bottom of the Mariana Trench, and we let the oceans drain out. For fun, we drained them to Mars. The Curiosity rover is working so hard to find evidence of liquid water, so I figured we could make things easier for it. <laughs> there is a lot of water currently on Mars. The problem is, it's mostly frozen. Sure. Liquid water doesn't last long there, because Mars is too cold and there's too little air. Before we inundated Curiosity, its temperature sensors recorded air and ground temperatures ranging daily between minus 100 degrees and zero degrees Celsius, with the ground occasionally getting a bit above freezing. Here's the phase diagram for water, and this line represents the average atmospheric pressure on Mars. Oh, it's so close to the triple point, so gonna have cycle cycles of gas to solid. Interesting. Which by coincidence almost perfectly intersects the triple point of water. It's technically possible for liquid water to exist on Mars at the very lowest elevations on warm days, since low elevations have higher atmospheric pressures, but on most of Mars's surface, water either solid. stays frozen or sublimates directly from water ice to water vapor. But well, adding some water is going to increase the pressure, localized. All the oceans coming in, well over a billion cubic kilometers of water. So I guess in the last video, not all of the water made it because it's just a drink because there were still holdout areas on Earth. The oceans we're dumping onto Mars wouldn't freeze solid anytime soon. Wow, Curiosity Rover must be immensely tough to withstand that much water coming out at that pressure. <laughs> Hey, I guess it's no fun to do it if no person or robot is there to observe it. We're dumping a lot of water very fast, and Mars isn't that cold. The average temperatures at the North Pole on Earth range from minus 30 to zero degrees Celsius, and only the top layer of water freezes, because ice is a decent insulator. Plus, the oceans are salt water, and salt makes it slightly harder for water to freeze. One thing about these impurities is a lot of exotic material, exotic to Mars that is, would be transferred to, to Mars from the Earth, and that would include trace amounts of seawater, uranium, and thorium. However, the amount of radioactivity this would bring in is next to nothing, especially considering the Martian surface gets over 100 times more radiation than the surface of the Earth. And that's because Mars doesn't have a magnetic field or an atmosphere. Well, it does, but it's very weak compared to Earth. Those are two things we take for granted on Earth to protect us from cosmic radiation. This is something we need to think about before colonizing this planet, is that I imagine a lot of colonies would be underground where cosmic radiation can't penetrate as deep. Here's an elevation map of Mars. Currently, Curiosity is sitting in Gale Crater, a round depression in the Martian surface with a peak, nicknamed Mount Sharp, in the center. We're Did that say Matt Damon? I'm going to have to back up a moment. Well, hopefully Matt Damon brought his space swimming trunks. Dumping a lot of water very fast, which will start to turn Gale Crater into a lake, just like it would on Earth. Sure. As the flow continues, the lake fills in, burying Curiosity under hundreds of meters of water. Sure. Oddly, the water would freeze from above and below at the same time because the Martian surface is also below freezing. Interesting. So we've established that water is going to be fast localized, but compared to the oceans on the Earth, it would take a very, very long time for it to eventually fill up. You're going to have turbulent flowing water, albeit at weaker gravity on Earth, but at freezing temperatures. I definitely agree that it's going to freeze at the bottom and the tops, probably at the bottom first because heat transfer from convection is going to be less than on Earth because Mars doesn't have much of an atmosphere, but it'll have the cold ground to cool off some of the water, but I'd imagine it would still take a while just because the flow is going to be very turbulent and therefore less likely to freeze, which is one of the reasons why you drip your faucets during a hard freeze. But it might happen eventually. Rocks and soil would almost certainly become frozen together into ice dirt chunks that break free and float up to the surface like icebergs. Eventually, Mount Sharp becomes an island surrounded by ice-covered water. 
However, before the peak can disappear completely, the water spills- <laughs> Looks like it just sprouted a hand. Oh, I guess it's just as likely for some of the water to just evaporate. We already saw the water phase diagram. Though you might get a slight atmosphere. Didn't specify how high up this portal was that's spitting out on the water. That might affect things a little bit, at least temporarily. Room for the crater and starts flowing out across the sand. The water flows downhill to the north and pools in the North Polar Basin, <laughs> while a layer of sea ice and rockbergs is she doing these little sound effects with this voice? That's that's amazing. <laughs> ...forms on top. When this kind of water release happens on Mars in real life, the trickle of water quickly freezes and sublimates before it can get very far. However, we've got a lot of ocean at our disposal. Gradually, the water will fill the North Polar Basin, covering the defunct Phoenix and Viking landers. And let I like that they're showing the lander is to still be intact just for reference and a few little fishes there that's that's funny they also get caught in freezing ice and lifted up to float on the surface if we look at the rest of mars we'll see there's still a lot of land far from the uh oh looks like matt damon's underwater now <laughs> Water. I'm a big fan of maps. I've spent a lot of time drawing them and just looking at them over the years. And I have to say, I think this one's kind of boring. It's just this big empty swath of land with some ocean on top. Luckily for us, if not for Mars, we haven't come close to running out of ocean yet. At this point, the water fills in the Valles Marineris. So I don't actually know, but I'm thinking, I don't think it'll completely submerge Mars, even though there's enough ocean to cover most of the surface, just considering how small Mars is relative to Earth. But I doubt it would cover like Olympus Mons, just considering how much taller it is than Mount Everest. I think these unusual coastlines here. The water and ice now reach the other Mars landers, carrying them south. Eventually, the flow breaks through into the Hellas impact crater, the basin covering the lowest point on Mars, and Perseverance is likely destroyed in the ensuing ice rock waterfall. In my opinion, the rest of the map- These voices are just amazing. ...map is starting to look pretty good. Like, check out that crinkly coastline. Like, this is a nice map. This is the kind of map where if it were in the front of a fantasy novel, I would spend a lot of time looking at it and trying to decide where, like, my kingdom would be. It actually looks like one of those uh, fractal Pangea maps if you ever play Civilization. Less hiding spots for the AI to run away with the game. The swath of land in the southern hemisphere splits oh, into several large islands and innumerable smaller ones, and also looks very nice. Just A+, plus, excellent map. The water quickly finishes covering most oh, of the no. high southern plateaus, leaving only a few islands left. And then, at last, the flow stops. The oceans back on Earth are drained, and the rovers all have water damage and are now probably out of warranty. <laughs> Uh, just a little teeny tiny amount of Martian surface. Well, for now, anyway. It'd still probably take a while for the water to freeze and then sublime, just considering how much of it, it is there is. Not to mention a temporary rise in atmospheric pressure from it just dumping all the way in. Olympus Mons and a few other volcanoes are still above water, and they aren't even close to being covered. Olympus Mons still rises well over 10 kilometers wow. above the new sea level. The I guess that was close. So it was more than Olympus Mons that survived, but... Yeah, I remember, but yeah, that's a, that's a really tall mountain. The oceans on Mars would last a very long time. The surface of Mars is already at least 2% ice by weight, and that ice gradually gets transported to the poles by sublimation and atmospheric circulation, but it's an incredibly slow process. Sure. We're covering the planet with an enormous amount of ice-topped water. The ice would get thicker and thicker as the water below it cools. It's a lot, but the mass of all of Earth's oceans is less than 1% of the mass of Mars. And maybe that's where we should put all the dry cast storage, chuck it into the oceans on Earth, send it through a magical portal, and then dump it under a a bunch of water that's just gonna freeze and then sublime. That's a bad idea. Though is it the worst idea? ...and eventually the oceans would freeze solid. The surface would very gradually sublimate away to the poles, and if the ice had picked up enough dirt and rocks, they would be revealed and collect on top, like how dirt collects on top of a melting snowbank, until perhaps eventually the equatorial regions of Mars would become a dusty, rocky surface atop a bedrock of ice. <laughs> Except maybe none of this would happen. Those sound effects. Water is a potent greenhouse gas, and with so much new water available to evaporate into the atmosphere, maybe Mars would warm up and the oceans would remain liquid as they are here on Earth. I'm not so sure. You'd also have to take Earth's atmosphere with it, and a good bit more greenhouse gases, I would think. <laughs> so in order to prevent whatever you're doing from being stripped away by the solar winds, Mars is in desperate need of a magnetic field for any of this stuff to be sustainable. So while we're in the realm of magic, let's just go with deploying giant magnets or something. <laughs> so if you want to support life on Mars, well, you're going to need nuclear power plants because solar panels just simply aren't going to give you enough energy. There's only one way to find out. <laughs> Love the sound effects, and I love that the little rovers just survived this whole process. They're, you just voided their warranty. Thanks so much for the recommendation on this video, and thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.